Are you ready for the ultimate bikepacking weekend adventure? Join us for an unforgettable self-supported bikepacking trip through Southwest Virginia. The Grayson Gravel Pie Bikepacking Adventure travels along the Virginia Creeper Trail, the beautiful gravel roads of Grayson County, Virginia, and the New River Trail. All lodging and camping arrangements are included, along with daily routes and guides riding along with you. This self-supported adventure offers resupply opportunities every 20 miles for your food and water needs. Find out more at GravelTravelDirt.com. You're listening to Mid-Atlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt. Hi everybody, this is Brian, and this is episode 176 of Mid-Atlantic Gravel, Travel, and Dirt. So if you're new here, this is the podcast where we talk about gravel bikes, adventure biking, bike packing, bike camping, playing crazy bike games in Pennsylvania is what we're going to talk about tonight, or just actually playing bikes. Joining me tonight, Troy Farrar from U.S. Endurance, Gravel Grinder Nationals that just happened back in Loudoun, and the upcoming... Soul Survivor. Now, Troy, I'm going to call it a bike game because it's more, to me, it feels like more of a game than a race kind of a thing, but I'll let you kind of like tell me what you want to, what you actually want to classify it as. We're going to talk yeah. all about that tonight and, and get the, the whole rundown. I've done a little bit of a deep dive, but I want to say right at the top, welcome, Troy. It's good to have you here. Good to have you back. Well, thanks, man. It is great to be back on. Awesome. Uh, before we get to any of that, though, I got a little business to do. Cutaway USA, I got to give them my shout outs. I do at the top of every episode because they're awesome. Cutaway USA is offering premium cycling apparel born in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Cutaway is an industry user leader using innovative fabrics combined with clean and bold designs. Make sure to visit their website to see all of the cool stuff that they got. Um, CutawayUSA.com. When you reach the checkout, use the code GTD20 to take 20% off of your entire order. I am still amazed, Troy, every day that Philip continues to offer that deep a discount to our listeners. I, it just right on. blows me away. 20%. That's huge. It's huge. It is good. It is good. And uh, obviously, folks, go over to Ridge Supply, too. Um, you're kind of like roundabout uh, supporting Cutaway when you buy that brand new floral kit that um, Matt has offering now for weird supply on pre-order super super awesome so troy before we dive in i i got just a little bit of of brian news that i and i'm I'm gonna share this with you i'd love to get your feedback on this i i'm way late to the party on this but i just added a garmin varia radar to the back of my bike um we were talking a little bit in the in the pre-show troy you were asking me what that was uh basically it's it's like high-tech radar combined with a light that you mount on the back of your bike and your Garmin head unit. And I think it works with all these other head units as well, like Wahoos and, you know, on down the line, it actually gives you a, a, an audible cue and a visual cue as to traffic that's going on behind you. And as soon as a car enters, I think it's like 150 yards somewhere in that neighborhood, you get a little audible beep. And then you get a little dot that's on the side of your Garmin and it just moves up as that car gets closer and closer and closer. And if there's multiple cars, it gives you multiple dots. And it'll also tell you if a car is moving fast or slow or like I had this happen today on a ride. Um, the, the car actually got up behind me, couldn't pass. And so they were going the same speed that I was and they actually disappeared off of the radar, which is a little disconcerting. I'd like to actually see, um, something that's that big stay there. But I mean, have, have you heard of that before, Troy? I have not. It sounds amazing. I, you know, I, I heard about it, I guess, when it first came out and I didn't really think too much about it. But um, when I was on the Blue Ridge tour last week, there were quite a few people that had it. And so I was talking with them about it and I got to see it work because the lights on the, the, the um, unit actually change their intensity when the radar is triggered. So they brighten and they flash a different pattern. Um, so it's very, becomes very visible to, you know, the driver and I, it really works. I, I just, anything that increases your situational awareness on the bike, I think is a good thing. And I, I've, 
I've gone back and forth with using the mirrors. I had a little quirky mirror and I can't, I've never been able to use the things that you put on your helmet or the things that you put on your glasses. It just always seems like it's more interference having something up there in my face like that. But I've tried the little handlebar mirrors and they always break off. They're always a mess. Um, this just really, really works. So, um, so does it have you will it will a motorcycle trigger it out of yeah, curiosity? Yeah. You know? yeah, absolutely. How about another cyclist? So because they're moving at approximately the same speed you are, they do not. And there's also a, a what they call a Peloton mode because I think the intensity of the light can get a little bit obnoxious if you're on a group ride. Um, you can tone down, you can basically, I think, kind of turn off that increased intensity of the light if you're in or on a group ride in the Peloton mode. Uh, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't pick up, um, cyclists. I was, I was riding behind, I was riding a sweep a couple of days down in Blue Ridge and the fellow that was riding in front of me had one. And, and I, I said, Oh man, I'm so sorry that I'm setting off your radar. Cause I could hear it beeping. He goes, you're not setting that radar off. Those are cars. And I, I actually, I, that kind of like, it was like a ping moment kind of thing for me where just really, I, I think it's, well, like I said, anything that increases situational awareness and the battery seems to last forever. Just, and it automatically connected to my Garmin. I run a, a 830. Uh, so it automatically connected to my Garmin. And it, the cool thing too, is since it's a color screen, when a car shows up on the radar, the sides of my Garmin screen turn either orange or red along with the dot. So huh. orange like tells me, I, I'm still trying to figure out what the difference is between the two. Um, I think the red is either a mass thing or a combination of a mass and a speed thing. So because I've noticed it when it goes red, uh, it's usually like a big truck that's passing me. And Uh, If it's orange, it's usually a smaller car that's kind of traveling at a more normal rate of speed, maybe. But I still think it has something to do with how fast it's closing on you. Uh, And then maybe the orange is for for women because they don't drive as crazy as men, and the red is like, hey, watch out. There's a guy (laughs) driving up behind you. (laughs) Troy said that, not me. Hey, no. the women are better drivers, is what I'm saying. Uh, no, <laughs> Those I, reckless men. <laughs> it, it really, it, it, like I'm all about situational awareness, and and you know, it's just another piece of data that enters your brain, and I don't have to look over my shoulder. Although, you know, obviously, it says make sure you do still look over your shoulder. Don't just depend upon this uh, because technology right. can fail. Um, you know, the, the, I'm guessing it could slide down or maybe change position and, um, it, but there's a little icon that tells you it's connected. So, you know, whether it's on or off, um, my Garmin automatically created an, a light network. Now I, I didn't get the one, there's a new one out right now. And this is kind of what got me thinking about it. That has a camera integrated as well as a tail light, as well as the radar. And I've been, huh. I've been a big fan and I've used the fly six from Cyclique for a very long time. I'm, I just like having that information about what's going on behind me because I think the more people that do that run cameras, the better accountability we can hold drivers to when we're on the road and interacting with cars. Um, and I've had that work to my benefit. Now, obviously if I ever, ever had something catastrophic, then there's some, some video data there to, to determine what happened. Um, hopefully I never have to actually use it for that, but I I do think it it creates some accountability on the part of drivers. I've had a couple of instances where I've had commercial vehicles or vehicles that were advertising things and they do something stupid. And, um, here it is. I've, I've also had interactions with school buses and I've, so I've actually had some conversations with our local board of education about the school bus drivers. So there's some good that comes out of it. And when you have that video data that I don't want to call it proof, but you know, it's kind of what it is, you know, it's, it's kind of like, here's something that happened and you can't dispute it. You know, it's here. No, for sure. It's a, it's a good tool. I would say. Well, I, I looked at the getting the one that was all inclusive, but, um, I did look at some reviews. DC Rainmaker kind of like railed it. And probably the thing that put me past like that was a good solution was the fact that it doesn't have any image stabilization. I mean, that's sort of like a, a camera standard today. Now, I don't, I don't want to use that as like, oh, here's some action camera footage. That's not my intent 
for having a camera on the back of my bike. Right. Uh, so I'm not really worried about the ease of use with regard to pulling video files off there. I slap the card on my computer and pull it off. It's easy. Um, but, you know, having them all integrated into one unit was kind of appealing until I kind of like read those reviews. And that was the piece that kind of put it over the top. So now I had to find a, a way to run the Varia radar and my cyclic camera, which the added benefit of not having to run the fly six in a flashing mode is the battery lasts a lot longer. I got like almost five hours out of that on, on just video mode today. Uh, huh. so, and that's got the image stabilization, 1080 P 60. So it's, you know, it's good quality. You can read plates without any problem. Um, and then to make one thing, even just a little bit sweeter, I went over to the Garmin website and the radar slash light unit is normally like 200 bucks, but they had it on sale and I'm assuming that's going to continue, uh, 50 bucks off. So it was only 150 bucks to add that radar. And then I got a little mount that actually hooks onto the rails of my saddle so I can tuck it up underneath the saddle, but still actually have my speed sleeve back up in there. It all kind of fits really nice. So, um, I'm impressed. Color me impressed with the Varia radar. Yeah, and very, sounds very cool. Their, um, their website, 50 bucks off. I mean, that, that was a hard deal to beat and it showed up in like two days. So, uh, you know, guys, check it out. Guys and gals, check it out. I, I think anything that makes us safer out there is a good thing. Uh, Strava Club. I don't want to forget about our Strava friends, our top 100 random writer shout outs. Bruce Mort from Frederick, Maryland with 191.5 miles. Good job, Bruce. And this one's fun. I, I, I kind of, I, I fudged a little bit on this one because the name caught my eye. I typically just pull random numbers and grab people, but th this name caught my eye. The Silver Snurfer from North Braddock, Pennsylvania, 139.7. See, these Pennsylvania guys are ready for bike games, Troy. I'm telling you, they're ready for Let's it. Let's bring them on. Uh, Matt, <laughs> Matt Smith from Cobbs Creek, Virginia, 328.8 miles. Big week, Matt. Good job, buddy. To break into the top 100 for the week, you needed 137.4 miles. That's kind of holding steady right in that ballpark right now, now that the in, quote unquote, in season is here. And we're up to 831 members from 830. If you want to check it out, strava.com forward slash clubs forward slash gravel travel dirt. Go over there and check it out. Anybody that wants to play bike games. So, Troy, let's talk. Let's, let's dive into the things you're here to talk about. But before we get to Soul Survival, Sur Survivor, I would just take just a couple of minutes and revisit the Gravel Grinder Nationals that just took place in Loudoun. We had the opportunity to say hello to each other in passing as the rain was beating down on all of us. How did it go in your, in your world? It went well. Um, you know, first off, i got to give a huge shout-out to uh, Dirty Kitten, yeah. Uh, Alex and Chris, our race directors, did a fantastic job. They laid out a great course. Um, we had a ton of volunteers, um, and they were awesome. I mean, as you know, the week leading up to it was just beautiful. It was like 70 degrees, 75 <laughs> degrees every day. Yeah. And then uh, the day before, it started raining on Friday, and the temperatures dropped. And I was telling someone just recently that I'm pretty sure it never stopped raining Nope. From Friday until Saturday night or Sunday morning, uh, not as for one second. I don't think it stopped raining. Nope. It just rained the nope. whole time. It went from it it went down from, in the forties, right? I yep. think, or maybe. Uh, so <laughs> we were wet, <laughs> yeah, and cold. Um, but you know, so uh, the course was fantastic. Mm. Um, everyone had a great time. Everyone really coaster course was just beautiful. I mean, it's really yeah. such a beautiful area. Yeah. We started and finished at Bluemont um, at uh, Bluemont Station, which is like a local winery slash microbrewery uh, place. And uh, I mean, you were there. That was an awesome place to yeah. hang out yeah. after the race. Yeah. Everyone got a free slice of pizza, and and there's plenty to, uh, of food or drink if you wanted it. And so I was. I mean, we were happy with everything. Of course, we'd have loved it if it wouldn't have rained and it would have been a little warmer. But other than that, we were super happy with the event. I mean, really happy for our first year there, and for the, sure. I, I, we're actually going to have Alex and Chris 
uh, next week on the podcast to, to kind of revisit and talk about some of the stuff. They were supposed to come on the podcast. I think it was like the week after Grinder Nationals. We wanted to do a book full recap with them. And I think COVID struck the whole kind of like everybody. So we Yeah, had, Alex got sick. I know she got COVID. I don't know if Chris ended up getting it also yeah, or not. Yeah. I um I had every intent of doing the full pull out there and I got to that left hand turn and <laughs> it was like go straight, go back to warmth and make the left hand turn and get a little bit more misery. And you know, I, I sat there and I talked to Chris for a while and at the more I sat there, the colder I got. And I just said, you know what? I'm not racing for anything today. I've had a great day on the bike. I am going to go get warm. And it took me. You're not the only guy that did that. We had quite a few people that yeah, did that. It was, it was the, I mean, I understand those guys that were racing, the guys and gals that were racing. I mean, yeah, they got after it. Um, and boy, I was impressed with some of the times. On, on yeah, that. they were fast, and man, those high school kids were really fast. Yeah, yeah, that was really fast. That was so cool to see. Now, the the only the only complaint I have about the whole event was the shotgun start. He scared the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Texas. That's how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was. It just it caught me off guard. I, I think I might have peed a little, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I was wearing bibs and a chamois, so it's all good. Just call me a triathlete, you know? Uh, so what's next for Gravel Grinder Nationals? You guys back to Virginia You know, we're trying to year? decide. Yeah. We, we liked it there. Um, and there's, you know, the one negative, as you know, the road in at the end is uh, a little bit traffic-y um, or could be traffic It wasn't that day, but it could be. Mm. So we're not sure. We, um, I love, like I said, our race directors, I couldn't have, uh, had two better race directors. Um, they did a fantastic job and all the volunteers and just locally, you know, we, we had a lot of support. So we are trying to decide where we'll, I, I would say it's either going to be, uh, in PA or VA next year. And we're even kind of toying with maybe bouncing back and forth. And so yeah. we're just not quite sure yet. Well, we, we have for, for a while there, um, we, we bounced back and forth between Joey and I, whether we liked North Carolina or Pennsylvania. And we, we played with that for a little while, but I, I think, sorry, Matt, we've actually come full circle and, and we're full on, uh, Pennsylvania ites, uh, at this point in the game. Cause I tell you, it's a special place up there. So I think no matter where you go, if you stay in Virginia, you, you've got a known quantity there. Um, so that, that's one thing, but you, I don't think you can go wrong with looking at Pennsylvania for sure. And, and that's, kind no, of, I mean, you, that's kind of cool. You know, the I, idea of bouncing back and forth is kind of neat. I, I think that people might dig that. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's interesting. I was just had a list on this week was talking with both Mike Coon, who runs NICA mm -hmm. up in, in yep. Pennsylvania and also with Dave Fryer, who, uh, runs unpaved. And we were just talking about how PA is really becoming a hotbed for gravel. They just had the Granduro there. You've got Unpaved. Like, there's several big events um, that happen, uh, big gravel events that are happening in PA. So it's really becoming kind of one of the one of the gravel hotbeds in the country. Yeah, it's really coming on strong. Joey went up for the weekend for Granduro. Uh, I was finishing out my my Blue Ridge tour, so I couldn't I couldn't head up there for that. But I saw the pictures, and it looked like everybody had a great time. I think Dave had a really good time too in his Hellbender Salamander suit. We haven't talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> Dave apparently showed up in a in a salamander suit. Uh, so uh, I awesome. you know if you think about it too, from a purely marketing standpoint and a business standpoint. If you bounce it, you're going to get this crowd of Virginia people that will go to PA. You're going to get these PA people that will start coming down to Virginia. You could actually see this like evolving into instead of you know a regional event where just people from the region are showing up, which you've already got traffic from around the country. I know that come for Grinder Nationals, and I talked to a few people that had come a long doggone ways um, for Loudoun County Gravel at that event, and but I think that would be really cool to kind of like that that idea of kind of like this this travel and road show kind of thing we do too and especially you know it's obviously it's easier if you have it in the same place year for year but if we you know we've got narrowed it down to two places and we just went back and forth that mm -hmm. would probably be pretty easy as well and so yeah. we are like i said we're still kicking different ideas around but that one's certainly you know, one of the big ideas cool cool i like it i like that i like that a lot 
and I'm already looking forward to next year. Let's let's if it is in Loudon, let's let's order up some better weather though. <laughs> let's let's get <laughs> let's get it on the docket now. All right, let's let, let's switch gears and talk about Soul Survivor. Um, I, I, I'm just going to give you the floor here for a few minutes to explain to everybody in your words what it is. Okay, so I love you know. First off, I'll tell you I love any event that gets people outside and gets them dirty. And, you know, having fun doing something. And I love cycling. I like trail running as well. Um, I love riding gravel. I love mountain biking. Um, and so we kind of put a little bit of everything in this one. And it's, uh, but it's separate events happening at the same time. So if you're a gravel guy, you're only going to ride gravel. If you're a mountain biker, you're only going to ride mountain bike. And if you're a trail runner, you're only going to trail run during this event. And everyone has their own course, so trail runners aren't going to have to worry about mountain bikers blasting past them and half running them over or anything like that. Everyone's going to have their same, their own course. The the way it works, um, it's sort of a 12 hour race. Um, we and we've got, I guess, let me back up. We've got solo for the hardcore people. We've got two person teams for also hardcore people, and then we've got what we're calling grande teams, uh, which is a big relay. You can have as many or as few as you want. You could have three people on a grande team, and you still ride a decent amount of laps. Or you could have 10 or 12 people on a grande team, and you might only each ride just one lap. And so the way it works is at 8 a.m., we put everybody for each different race in there. We call them the starting corral. They get in the starting corral. We say go, and you have an hour to complete your lap. And so for the runners, it's like a – 4.1 mile lap. I think for the mountain bikers, it's between seven and eight miles. And for the gravel guys, it's between, it's eight and 10 miles, somewhere like that on the lap. So you'll be able to do the lap fairly, you should, you know, fairly easily in less than an hour. You come back in, you can eat, you can hang out, you can, you know, do push ups, dance, whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, but when we say go for the nine o'clock lap, you have to be in the starting corral. If you're not in the starting corral, you're out. And if you're on a relay team, your whole team's out. Um, and so, you know, if you come back in at 840, you can do whatever you want. But at before 9 o'clock, you've got to be in that starting corral. So now I'm, um, I'm not sure I want Joey on a team because paying attention to detail, that sounds important. <laughs> yeah, know. well, and we'll give a little warning. We'll give a whistle to tell everyone, you know, two minutes before or something like that. Um, but, uh, so it's different than, you know, if you've heard of like a 12 hour mountain bike race and, and mount, uh, it's different that you can't start your next lap. You know, as soon as you finish, you have to wait. Mm-hmm. And on the top of the hour, we start, er- start every hour. Um, you know, for guys that are relay, it's not going to be any problem making those times, but if you're going solo, obviously once you get 10 or 11 laps under your belt, um, it gets much harder to make oh, those yeah. times. Oh yeah. And then after 12 hours, we start deducting five minutes off every progressive lap time so for instance the 13th lap you know 13th hour lap you only have 55 minutes and the 14th hour lap you have 50 minutes and the 15th you have 45 and we keep going down until everyone's eliminated and basically whoever's the last person in each age group they are the sole survivor Um, we're going to award three deep uh, in all age groups in all categories but we'll definitely have the champions the sole survivors but it's a you know, I love it that you're calling it biking games because it is, it's a race, yet it's more of a race slash festival is the way I think of it. Um, just sort of like a 12 or 24 hour mountain bike race. How, you know, there's a lot of fun. Like there, mm. you see, you see the racers a lot. Um, they're great events to bring, uh, family along and friends along to cheer them on. And, you know, if you do it, especially if you do a team, it can be a, you can get people from work or from your bike shop or, and as far as we know, I mean, there's 24-hour and 12-hour mountain bike races where they have teams, but as far as we know, it's the first ever gravel team event, which is super cool. Like, grab some gravel buddies, build a team, and come race. And then, you know, also um, for trail running, there's there's kind of a similar event. We, it's really where we got the idea from. They call them backyard ultras, where they do a 4.1 mile lap for 24 hours, and that's a they complete an ultra. I mean, but I don't think everybody knows like Barkley Marathon and stuff like that. Right, kind of like that same. But, but that's that's crazy. Sort of. That's crazy talk over there. That Barkley nonsense. Yeah. So, but with backyard ultras, no one's in a team uh, team format either, where you can have a team, and so you're not having to do the whole thing. 
Um, we think it's going to be really fun. You know, there's a lot of guys that cross over between gravel and mountain biking, mm-hmm. but it, there are also guys that are only gravel riders or only mountain bikers. So we're bringing those two groups and the trail running group in. I think, you know, it offers a great opportunity for, let's say, the girl that loves to ride gravel, but her boyfriend's a trail runner and not a gravel. They can come and both take part in the event and hang out together. Yeah, that's cool. Um, now, we just think we're, we're going to – yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I, so this is all – it's all finishing in the dark time, too, because it's like the 13th it, that's hour. That's right. <laughs> that's wild. We're going to have a little bit of night riding on the gravel and, uh, and mountain biking and trail running, up, but not a ton, but a little taste of it. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's just going to be fun. I mean, we're going to show movies at night and just have a, have some contests, have a huge raffle and, um, you know, we're just going to have a lot of fun. And I think it's going to be great to bring all these different groups together. And, uh, we're excited. I think it's always cool to do something new, uh, that people haven't, you know, no one's done before. And so here's the opportunity for guys from, from this region to go be part of something brand new. And, and I'm going to tell you now, I know, gravel cyclists and mountain bikers i know we know how to have a good time i the trail runner world is completely new and different to me jess is not here to kind of like speak up for the runners but i'm I'm hopeful that a trail runner is going to be kind of like the same kind of like cut a cloth so to speak they are they're dirt bags just like we are right on see so so (laughs) they like to hang out and have fun and camp out and it's going to be awesome you bring in a bunch of people together that i think all know how to have a good time to play a giant game and then in the dark time just break out cowbells and start crazy nonsense <laughs> so that's right they're a little that's si- right i can see little side games and cornhole and all sorts of, of crazy nonsense going on so that this sounds like a crap ton of fun I, it just really does it sounds like more like a festival um than a race i mean i know one of the things that we talk about a lot with gravel is the community that that it you know is there and bringing three communities together into one giant outdoor space that looks really cool can we talk for just a minute about the venue yeah so we're super excited about that also a really good friend of mine runs it's a youth summer camp is what it is and and where we're hosting it out of he runs that camp and so some of the great advantages we have there is, you know, all of the trail running and mountain biking is on private property. Like, we don't have to worry about anybody oh, else. Nice. And the gravel, he was like, he was like, really, the gravel is almost like you're on a closed course. He's like, you will, he's like, maybe a few cyclists will see a couple of cars during the whole 12 hours. Um, so that's super exciting as well. We love that, to hear that. Um, it's a beautiful camp. He's renting the cabins out, so... You can, you know, if you've got a team and you're coming, you want to rent a cabin, so you've got a kind of a place to uh, hold up and to sleep and everything. He's renting the cabins out. He's going to be cooking food in the cafeteria, and it's just a. I mean, I just think it's a fantastic venue for for. We couldn't ask for a better venue to host it at. What's What's the name of the campground? It's Camp. It's actually Camp Susquehanna. That's how you say it. Susquehanna. Okay. And yeah, it's Susquehanna. In, and it's in Susquehanna. Rackney, PA, which is northeast. Pennsylvania. Northeast Pennsylvania. Okay. That was the other thing is like is like the the general like footprint of the location. Pretty close to Scranton. Uh, I think it's like thirty minutes from Scranton. Oh cool. Electric City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so so what has the response been so far? What's I mean, registration is open, I assume. We just so we just really pushed out and, and are just pushing out over the next week or so our big um, marketing uh, push. So we're sending, uh, sending posters out to lots of shops. Um, we got all, really, because I'm from Texas, I don't know the riders up there, right? Mm-hmm. So we, we're really relying on our buddies that are in the area. So we've got all the local, you know, Dave Fryer with Unpaved and, and uh, Ryan who runs Transylvania Epic and, and uh, the um, – Dirty Kittens and all those different guys, we've got them all pushing it out. And so we'll see what the response is going to be. We certainly hope um, that we get a good response. We're going to actually limit it to 200 participants per discipline. Now, when I say that, um, that's a little bit false in, in that. We only want 200 people on the course at a time. So if you're running a 
two person team, but there's only one person riding at a time, obviously, we just count you as one. Or if you have a 10 person team, we were just going to count that as one because there's only one going at a time. But once we hit, you know, basically 200 teams, whether it's solo, two person or, 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 uh, or the grande is what we call the big teams. Um, then we'll, we'll block that, that activity off. That'll be, you know, so let's say the trail running hits at first, then that'll be all we take. So hopefully that'll encourage guys to get signed up and, and yeah. uh, get in the thing. We really want to, want to have a, a big fun event. That's a, that's a lot of math you're doing there. I applaud you for that. Um, <laughs> we haven't even mentioned the dates. What time of the year? So September 17th and 18th, which from what I've been told is probably generally just perfect weather. Perfect. Be, you know, great of course, temperature. We, we would have thought early May in Loudoun County would have been perfect <laughs> as well. And we ended up with a blizzard snow ice event, but whatever. <laughs> no, right. that, that should be absolutely perfect, perfect weather. Um, so in addition to the cabins, is this a camping thing? Is it an RV thing? What kind of thing? You yeah. Got there? So, uh, they got tons of space for camping and that's, that's also loud. If you don't want a cabin and you just want to have a campsite, um, you can absolutely do that. You can bring, they don't have RV hookups, but you're more than welcome to bring RV or, uh, sprinter vans or whatever. I mean, they've got, that's another nice thing is we just have so much room there. Um, it's just beautiful. There's a big lake right there. It's just, you know, in the woods. I mean, it's just a fantastic place. So will people have to hobo bathe in the lake or will there be like shower facilities? <laughs> they have shower facilities actually. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah. So they that. have shower facilities for the, for the, uh, for the cabins, um, uh, you know, around the camp, there's different ones set up and we'll have bike wash and there and, and really everything that goes with the race. And so that's, that sounds really really like a crap ton of fun now the the one thing the the trail runners i don't know if this is appropriate for them but i know from a mountain bike perspective as well as the gravel um you know you've got an eight nine mile course or a six seven mile course is, what's the elevation look like there's going to be some elevation loss and gain i don't have exact numbers right now but uh, the camp sits on the top of a mountain so you've got to uh, definitely the cyclists will have to come off of it and then go back up there is, um, is so it a technical mountain biking course or is it no it's okay. not it's, it's actually um i mean there's there's a couple of places um that you know if you're that if you're not a technical rider you'll have to hop off and it's really more go up which is what i love like instead of mm-hmm. having huge drop-offs that someone might not see you'll see it coming and be like mm, i can't climb that so you'll hop off and run through it or walk through it or as a technical guy can ride it um, but, uh, nothing, nothing super technical. So it's definitely a, you know, just a, a, a good little, a just normal, good little mountain biker can do it. No problem. You, you, you really nailed, I think the distances, um, you know, the four mile trail run, I have no idea whether that is big or not, but you know, six to seven mile lap on a mountain bike and an under 10 mile lap on a gravel bike, even with some elevation, that's, that's, that's fun. That's fun territory as opposed to right. suffer territory. So, um, now where can people go? Did we throw the website out there yet? I don't think we have. So it's the soul survivor.com and soul is S O L E. Um, and, uh, yeah, the soul survivor.com is where they can go to read more about it. And, and, uh, and then the, the bike, uh, both the gravel and the mountain bike are on bike Okay. And, uh, the, uh, run is on ultra sign up.com. I believe is what it is. You can get to all that stuff though, through the website, right? Correct. There's okay. links on the website. Okay. That'll take you there. Well, I, I have to ask one more question. Whose brainchild was this? Is, did this come out of your brain, or is this like a... Yes, I was meeting a buddy um, who's an ultra runner, and we started kind of beating around the the idea of, of you know, how can we take a... So, like I said, the backyard ultra. So, in a, in a backyard ultra, they don't have any... Uh, the two things that are different, they they do those... Like I said, it's a 4.1 mile, so they, they do 100 miles in 24 hours, and they don't have any teams. And they also, to be an official, what's called backyard ultra... You can't start eliminating uh, time, and you can't say, all right, whoever does the next lap fastest wins or whatever. You have to just keep going until there's only one person. There's, there's no negotiations taking place here. That's right. <laughs> okay. And so we said, you know what, let's tweak it a little bit. Let's put teams in there also. Because um, it's just like I, I, and part of it came from um, I was a I, – I love – 
24 hour mountain bike races. I used to race lots and lots of 24 hour mountain bike races. And, you know, I, and I was actually at one time owned one of the biggest 24 hour mountain bike races in the country. And what I think I always loved about it is you had everything from solo people who are super hardcore and just going to do every lap themselves to the race I had. We also had, that's where we got the, the name for it, Grande teams, where you could put as many people on the team as you wanted. And we saw teams that actually would come out there with 24 people. So each just had to do one lap. And it was awesome because you take a beginner who's like, all I got in me is one lap. Um, they can come do it and have fun. And that's, that's what we want. We want people getting dirty, having fun, being outside, turning pedals or, or trail running, right? Running down the trails. And so it was kind of the same thing on this one. We're like, you know what? Hardcore guys can do it. Guys that are just getting started can do it. Uh, girls, you know, any, any level you can do it. High school kids could do it, do it as a family, uh, do it with friends, do it whatever, any way you want. And, uh, but let's just all get together and have some fun. Right. That's cool. September in Pennsylvania playing bike games. Ow. Yeah. I'm, I'm all over this. I am all over this. Um, my only question is, do I want to have a team? I want to have a team. Um, I want to have a lot of people on my team. <laughs> <laughs> And and I my my question though is whether I want to challenge other people if I wanted to create turn this little game into like a little uh, uh, challenge thing or if it's going to be I don't know what I want to do with this yet but I know that there I can I'm gonna I'm gonna lay the gauntlet down now there might there will be a gravel travel dirt team and who's going to be on it I don't know but we'll figure it out and we're going to do this because it sounds like a whole ton of fun. I'm going to tell you what, I think you hit the, the nail on the head with this one. I think it's going to be. Well, a hoot nail. We, I do too. And we sure hope so. I'm, I'm uh, you know, if it, it uh, if it goes well, then we may try to throw one down in Texas later, you know, next year or whatever, throw a couple other ones out there, but we're, we're starting with one and we'll see how it goes. So the last thing I always want to do is give you the opportunity to shout out your sponsors. Anybody out there that's supporting this effort so far? Yeah, you know, we, we, have, uh, we have a lot of great sponsors. A lot of more are guys that bleed over um, from Grinder Nationals because we just had a t- – I mean, you were there. You mm-hmm. saw the, the – the, uh, you saw the um, uh, All of raffle support. that we had at Grinder Nationals, yeah. right? Yep. So just, have, you know, going back to that, for Grinder Nationals now for seven years straight – We've had so many prizes during the, for the raffle that every single rider wins something every single year. That's cool. We t- well, I remember we Isn't talked that about awful? that before, yeah. And I rode, yeah. I rode along with uh, Gretna Bill from Lupine Lights for a while. We're sitting there, That's right. you and, know, chitter-chatting, chitter-chatting, and I didn't, he didn't know who I was. He, I didn't know who he was, and through the course of our conversation, it was like two podcasters and, and light guy riding along. It was kind of, it was kind of cool. And so to start off, Lupine is one of our sponsors. He, he's up in PA. And uh, they're going to be there. Orange Seal, Power Step, uh, Camp Zero, uh, OS First, Compression Wear, Sawyer, Zanfell, Motorex, Right Stuff, Adventure World Magazine. Those guys are all partners of ours, and more coming. So one one last one last question: Is there going to be food on site, or are people? So yes. He, okay. You can bring your own food. I mean, obviously, you're going to need your own race food. You can bring your own food. You can cook out. You know, there if you want, but. That's one of the things about being at the camp. They're actually going to have food for sale. They're going to have the cafeteria open in the camp and cook. Awesome. Really good food, like for breakfast, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, or whatever. Awesome. And so, yeah, it's 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 going to be fun, man. I just uh, I can't wait. Uh, we just <laughs> got to get everybody get the word out, right? Help spread the word. So you know the drill. Our last little section here. You're going to stick around for this or that's because if you don't, then I'm just this or thatting myself, and that's never any fun. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> any any it's other always fun. anything we've missed on Soul Survivor before we get to this or that? So you want to? You want? I don't think so. I think we I did think a deep dive. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think we did too. I think you, it, was, it was awesome. We really appreciate the cool. the uh, coverage. Okay, first item on this or that: Soul Survivor slash fun riding or Grinder Nationals slash racing. Um. Oh, man, you're putting me in a tough position on that one, aren't you? <laughs> but, hey, it, I'm looking forward, not back. So I'm saying soul survivor fun go. racing. <laughs> I, I love this this idea of this fun riding thing. So I'm right there with you. I... I am. I'm already looking forward to this. I don't want to wish summer away, but you know September isn't that far off. Um, second item: banjo or harmonica. Ooh, 
Wow. I'm going to say harmonica. The harmonica is super cool. Yeah. I, I've spent, you know, with the Blue Ridge tour, and I've been on this, like, spiral into new grass, bluegrass stuff. And even though the banjo itself is like this, like, obnoxious instrument, when somebody knows what they're doing with one of those things, it is pretty awesome. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go banjo on that side. Right on. Uh, get a fl- just, you know, banjo always makes me think of deliverance. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I'm with you. I like a good banjo with myself. I, we had a guy at our tour. We brought in the, the uh, he played the banjo. He was a flat picker guitar guy, and he played the banjo. And he actually had studied the banjo in college. I didn't know that was an option, um, and why it was an option, I'm still not sure. But boy, could he play that pian or the banjo, man! It was pretty awesome. Uh, That's would, cool. would you rather get a flat tire riding up a long hill or get a flat tire on a steep downhill? Up a long hill. Yeah, I, that this kind of this, after I wrote that, I was kind of like, "That's a that's a throwaway. That's a no brainer." <laughs> Who wants to have the an explosion going downhill? But that whole restarting going up a hill, my I guess in my mind, I'm still thinking about my Blue Ridge adventures and uh, climbing up twelve mile constant climbs and thinking about having to start all over again. Although I did stop at a lot of the, um, the scenic overlooks. Have you ever been on the Blue Ridge Parkway from down in Texas? That may be something. I I have, I have. We actually, uh, we actually went, spent two summers in, um, in, uh, Boone, North Carolina. Oh yeah. Which is right there. And, and, and actually we are thinking about moving there, uh, sometime in, in the fairly near future. We love it so much up there. My, um, I have family that has a house in Banner Elk. So that's just, oh, yeah. just right up down the road. The, yep. Just, just up the hill. And then Banner Elk is described as a drinking town with a skiing problem with Beach Mountain. I've done some rides out there <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what, there's some, there's some tremendous, tremendous riding in, in that area, in that vicinity, mountain bike and gravel and road, all of it, all together. Uh, let's see, last item on this or that, Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy? Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, I think uh, Jeopardy always makes me feel dumb. <laughs> me too. And you got Vanna White, she's still kicking it, man. That's amazing, isn't it? That is, that, there's some genes there going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Troy, man, this has been a lot of fun, and I'm so excited. We're going to talk more about this event over the course of this summer as we head into September because I, I just think it's, it's super cool, and I'm already excited for it. Um, before we get to shut this thing down, though, I want to give another quick shout-out to CutawayUSA.com. Go on over there, visit. Um, and get yourself some new kit. They've got these cargo bibs, Troy, that, that Joey and I have been all over now with the pockets on the side. But you, you've seen the pockets on the bibs before, but something that he's done, the sizing of them is just on point. It, it, it feels really good. It's not too big, not too small, just perfect. Um, so head on over cutawayusa.com. Thanks everybody for listening to this episode of Mid Atlantic Gravel, Travel and Dirt. If you've enjoyed the podcast, maybe consider heading over and checking us out on Patreon. That would be awesome. And you can find that through graveltraveldirt.com and check us out on Instagram at Mid Atlantic GTD. If you haven't seen it, I just posted a fun reel. I don't I don't do a whole lot of those. Um, so it's go over to, to Instagram at mid Atlantic GTD and check that out. Mid Atlantic travel, travel and dirt is recorded this week from right here in my house because Joey and Jess are absent, um, to all the way down in Texas. Now, we didn't talk about where you are in Texas. College station, Texas A&M. Got it. Thanks for riding along everybody. And thank you, Troy, for joining us and walking through soul survivor and recapping loud and grinder nationals, man. That was awesome. Really great to chat. Thank you, man. And stay safe. All right. Thanks for riding along. Till next time. Do good. Be nice. Go slow. Respect others. Love you. Bye. <laughs>